Here we are with one of the most requested bikes of the year, the Rocket 3. This is the Rocket 3R that we're standing in front of. There's also the Rocket 3 GT. The difference is a few uh, accommodations. Let's get into the basics of the bike. It's an all new bike for 2020, completely new frame, aluminum frame, all new engine, went from 2,294 cc's to 2,500 cc's now, 163 foot pounds of torque from just below 2,000 RPM all the way across the rev range. The torque curve looks like a flat line until you hit the rev limiter. It's unbelievable. But on top of that, it's also got 167 horsepower. So this thing is a monster of an engine, but we just got done with half a day riding so far. And though, although it's massive and it has impressive numbers, it's actually a teddy bear to ride. It's really unbelievable how smooth and how tractable this engine is and it doesn't matter what gear you're in. You can ride the thing, shift it like crazy, go through every corner, shift, 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 or put it in one gear and forget about it for the whole day. It's unbelievable. Power delivery is almost electric. Torque all the way through, doesn't matter what speed you're going, what gear you're in, you twist it and it goes. Uh, you could just throw out the, the gearbox completely. But the gearbox is really nice. Helical cut gears, it's nice and quiet shifts really smooth real positive engagement it's got a torque assist clutch on it doesn't have a slipper but it has torque assist because they want that that clutch to lock up quickly because there's so much torque it's almost like the clutch is optional you don't need it to get away from the light or anything like that almost when we first left the hotel just for the fun of it i was in first gear and i basically just let out the clutch like eh, and it just rolled away it's unbelievable really killer suspension on it 47 millimeter showa all new suspension in the rear, single-sided swing arm with the shaft drive. Usually with a shaft drive bike, sometimes you can expect some shaft jack and, and some weird handling characteristics, but not that noticeable on this bike, even with this much torque. Um, there's a tiny bit of shaft jack, but it doesn't really mess with the, the, the handling at all so far. Up front, really nice front end, pretty planted, really kind of medium to slow speeds on these really tight corners. Feel a little bit of wiggle on the bar, a little bit of chatter. But I think if we get into the clickers a little bit and change some stuff around, I'm pretty positive that'll go away. It could be just my weight further back on the bike than someone that weighs, weighs less. Stylema brakes. Stylema calipers on the front from Brembo. They stop this bike phenomenally. The bite is strong, modulation is excellent, and they have a really good feel. The rear brake, not as much. Uh, you do lose a little bit of feel in the rear kind of mushy feeling, but it still has a lot of power. So even though it feels mushy in terms of feel, like you don't feel what it's doing, it does have a lot of power and it slows the bike well. Super comfortable riding position. Two riding positions for this bike. On the R, you've got mid-mounted foot pegs, and on the GT, you have forward controls where that space is down there. The R, you can adjust them up and down. The GT, you can adjust them forward and back. I haven't ridden the GT much yet. I've sat on it. Forward controls, to me, always kind of a love-hate thing. They're comfortable for long distances, but then after a while, they're not. Mid controls like this, thumbs up for me all the time. You're above your foot pegs. Um, they're not tucked back underneath you. They're just kind of comfortably sat like a chair, and there's tons of ground, ground clearance. I haven't even drugged the pegs yet. We've been trying to, to really get it through the corners, and so far, tons of cornering clearance, and it's comfortable. Reach the bars. On the R, you've got flatter, wider, more forward bar, a little bit more sporty. It's a nice, comfortable reach for me, just slightly cantered forward. I'm 5'10", kind of an average size dude. So for me, it's just a little bit cantered forward, kind of sporty position. GT, more pullback, higher rise, nice and comfortable. Looks like it'd be great for long distance touring. And that's really the difference between the two bikes. Between the R and the GT is the kind of intended use. This is kind of the city bruiser, light to light, badass bike and the GT is the all-day cruiser throw the highway accessory kit on it that has bags and a bigger windscreen and you're set to go touring so so far really impressive bike really really solid package put together well and I really can't find much fault in the bike yet we're gonna hit the road a little more and I'll check back in with you when we get back to the United States with uh, the rest of this review